hello, welcome back. I am on my way to fun, obviously. I am not riding today. Debbie is actually coming out to do three rides on my ponies. So I'm very excited. I'm gonna film her riding them and you know, as much as I can in there and also trying to organize my new tap trunk that I bought that I brought to the barn and then never did anything with. So I need to do that. It's gonna be a fun day. I basically cleaned my entire house yesterday, reorganized everything, put it away, and it smells and looks amazing. We're setting up for the bridal shower tomorrow. I'm just super excited. I did start a second channel. It is K during the day. I can't remember who recommended the name for the channel. It was somebody that follows me. I don't know if it was on YouTube, Instagram. I'm not sure. But if you're still watching me and you were the one that recommended it, comment so I can give you credit because I love it. I think it's so cute. But it's going to be like my new lifestyle channel. And it's gonna be pretty heavily focused around like bullet journaling, crafts, art, some vlogs in, in there, decorating, basically everything that is my life outside of horses, which really isn't a whole lot, but I think it'll be enough to make a video or so a week. So I wanted to kind of separate things out. So yes, I did that and then another huge bit of information that I'm super excited for. I started an Etsy shop and essentially an LLC to cover all of the expenses for like bullet journaling. I'm going to start making custom bullet journals for bullet journals and stickers and just anything like art planning related. So I'm super excited about that. I have been wanting to do it for a while and I'm even thinking about doing one for K in the Bays because I spend so much money on stuff for social media and I wanted to be able to use some of that like as write-offs on taxes. So I'm trying to get to a point where I have multiple streams of income and maybe do social media and stuff full time because that is my ultimate goal. I think it would be just super fun. I love doing this. I just don't have as much time in the day to do the stuff that I want to do, if that makes sense. I know I can bring a lot more amazing content to you guys and I would have more flexibility to do that. However, it just, I, I don't have the time with my other full-time job, so. That will be the goal in the future, is to work towards that. And it's gonna be a little crazy and a little busy for a while, but I think I think I can do it. I know I can do it. It just, it's not gonna be something for me that's one of those like overnight sensations. I've been basically doing YouTube and Instagram for years now, and it's just been a slow, slow build, but this niche, this genre of content that I put out isn't, it's very like centralized. Like there's not a huge group of people who watch the videos like they would, you know, a beauty guru or you know, just somebody that just posts all kinds of stuff. So mine's very, very specialized. So I will link all of my social media stuff for the new channels and everything down below. I'm still in the process of getting them going. The end of this year has just been so busy, but I wanted to get it all set up. So that way after the new year, I can just kind of hit the ground running with it. So very excited for that. As far as updates with the horses, Really, there hasn't been much because I haven't been doing much. I have hardly ridden since we moved. I think I've ridden once or twice. I've just been so busy with work and end of year stuff, the wedding for my friend. I'm 
the maid of honor so i've been busy doing stuff with that it's just it's been a lot in the past month or so especially with the move and just a lot of stuff going on so i've been very lax with myself and if i'm you know planning to go to the barn but then i'm too i'm not caught up enough or i have too much stuff to do then i just unfortunately won't go out but once the end of the year is over, I will have a lot more time to get them back going. And it'll be super helpful now that I'm next to Debbie and she can come to me and do training rides and lessons. So that'll be really nice. The vet came out a few weeks ago, um, December 7th, and did the prostride injections on Zeke's coffin and pastern joint. So he should be good to go hopefully soon it takes a while for the pros try to kind of start working and kick in yes I'm hoping that will I'm hoping that will do the trick he is I don't know if the farrier came out and shot him or not but he is due to be shot all three of them are due to be shot I had the vet look at 10 and we did a lameness exam because I typically do one on him at least twice a year just because there's usually some maintenance that needs to be done with him. He had a really, really, really hard career on the track. He did not come off the track very sound. He just has a lot of body maintenance that he needs from his previous career, which I knew I'm fine, you know, I'm fine with it. But I've had, gosh, almost 10 different vets look at him not because like nobody could figure out what was going on, but depending on what barn I was at, what vet was coming out, that sort of thing. There's a couple different vets from the same veterinary office. So I've had quite a few vets look at him and all of them have done lameness exams on him. I've had multiple different chiropractors. I've had massage therapist, PEMF, or MagnaWave. I've had so many things for him, body therapy and vet treatment wise. And really the only things that have ever come up was when we found his pole injury that he had gotten before I got him. And then also the like hind end maintenance. He variously needs either hawk stifles or SIs injected and those are the only things that anybody had has ever mentioned that he was in pain for now if you've been following me for a while you get a general idea of his personality for the most part but short of being around him all the time you don't really get the full 10 personality he is a man of his own kind. He's very dramatic. He is not the type of horse to not show you exactly what he's feeling and thinking exactly when he's feeling it. So if he's pissed off at something, if something hurts, you're gonna know and it's not gonna be like a whisper. He's going to yell it at you. So typically if there's anything that legitimately hurts, he's not going to do his job. He's not going to want to do his job and he's going to be bitchy about it. So that being said, when we did the lameness workup and all of that, we did the flexions, everything flexion wise was perfect. He palpated, he did like the pen, like the, where they take the pen and go around and see if there's any kind of twitching or anything like that. And the only thing that he showed discomfort with was his SI and it was really sore like when he you know did the pressure on the SI he basically sunk down all the way to the ground and like went on his tippy toes on his hooves like his hind feet I was like oh my god okay you're pretty sore and that was after like I mean he had been off for almost almost a month so I hadn't been riding him hadn't been doing anything but that's what I was feeling at the horse show so I knew something needed maintenance but I just didn't know what and it was really hard to tell what it was but it was his his SI so we opted to have those injected and 
through all of it, I was like, you know, can I just get some x-rays of his back just for information? You know, like I just, I just want to make sure because over the past six months, I've had x-rays done on Zeke's back and Renita's back. And I just, you know, wanted to confirm the overall health, even though any kind of palpating, any kind of, he's never once shown any kind of back pain and every vet every worker is like oh wow his back is super flexible like he's got a really healthy top line there has been never any kind of, I know you know where I'm going with this so there's never been any kind of inkling of any issues back related so the vet just kind of laughed at me and he's like I mean if you want I can but I don't I don't see why you would need to you know it's not no issues so that I can see I was like, yeah, I know, let's just take a couple just, just for a baseline. So, Ten has kissing spine, like, actually pretty bad. Not like his entire back, but like right below where the saddle, the back of the saddle is. And it's very, very mild between, I, I don't know the, the, which ones they are, but there are two, there's four vertebrae, the, the two next to each other, very mild between these and like this between the other two. I saw it and I was like, oh my God. And even the vet was like, because if you were to do anything with him body work wise or see, you know, like he doesn't get pissy when I put the sat, like he doesn't show that that is painful. But, like, the horse and how he goes and, like, his palpations and, the, like, that, compared to the x-ray, it's, like, it didn't match. They didn't match. It was very confusing. So, I was, like, okay, this is very, very weird. Very weird. And even the vet was, like, I didn't, like, I, wow. Wow. We're just, we were just stumped, you know? So, he's like, truthfully, a lot of kissing spine cases are subclinical and horses don't really show symptoms of it, which 10 doesn't. Like, the classic symptoms of kissing spine are a lot of the times the horse won't want to lay down. They won't want to roll. They get really irritated when being tacked up. They're just, they, they don't want to perform and do their job. And none of those things are 10. So, you know, I don't, my gut is telling me that it's not that he's, it, it hasn't caused pain at some point, but I think he is compensating in his hind end which is why we've had to do so much maintenance in his hind end since I purchased him. I mean, along with the fact that he did have a tough career. But I truthfully think that even though it may not be something that is like painful for him currently, that pain is being distributed somewhere else. So we opted to do mesotherapy on his back because the only way to actually treat and cure the kissing spine is to have the surgery, which I did not really think would be a good idea, at least right now, because it's winter, he's fresh, he's wild, the blanketing, all of that kind of stuff, I just didn't think would... I think it would be just really stressful for him, especially with the fact that like if the horses are going out and he can't go out, if I were to do the surgery, I would do it like in a summertime time because he has to be stalled during the day anyway because of his uveitis during the summer. So, cause he hates the fly mask that I bought that helps with the UV rays he literally rips it off so he's just gonna have to stay inside under a fan during the summer so if I do decide to do a surgery on him it, it'll be like end of spring summer that he will that I will do it and 
I just want to preface by saying it's not related to cost. Like, I mean, if, if the vet was like, you need to do this right now, I would do it and I would find a way to pay for it. You know, it's not, it's not cost. It's, it's purely out of just knowing him as a horse and the timing of everything. I just do not think it would be beneficial to do it right now. So the reason why we opted to do the mesotherapy is just because he didn't seem to be pained by it. So going like straight ahead to doing injections or, or something of that na nature, like a more invasive treatment, just didn't seem like the right decision right now. Mesotherapy is pretty affordable. It's not super expensive, at least from what I think. I haven't gotten the bill for it yet, so I'm kind of nervous about that. But I think it's like maybe a couple hundred bucks. So I decided to do that. And if you don't know what mesotherapy is, it's basically when the, um, the vet will go in with, and it's got like four, I think it's four needles on this little thing. And then he has a thing of the stuff and he basically goes down his back and does these little small injections. And essentially what it does is it numbs the nerves, like the pain receptors. So essentially I want to, like the best way to describe it is, is, is it just numbs their back. And my idea was, and also the vets, he's like, you know, since he's obviously not showing visible signs, if we do this, ideally you should be able to notice a difference in him going because all of this is like numbed essentially. So I was like, okay, that's a good idea because if I notice a massive difference and I notice that he's going so much differently, you know, and it's, it's going to take a little bit just because a lot of horses have like pain remembrance and changing the way they're going. If they've been going a certain way for so long, it, it takes a little bit to kind of really see what the results are going to be. So I'm excited to see him on the ground because I can see how he goes on the ground because I know how he feels, but I can see how he goes with Debbie on the ground to see what she thinks as far as how he feels. And she hasn't ridden him in a long time, but I'm just like, I'm curious to see how big of a difference, if any, this makes, because if it makes a huge difference, then that gives me the information I need to know that we need to go to more invasive measures. I don't have the x-rays back yet. He was supposed to email him weeks ago, but I know he's super busy. So I'll try and get the x-rays. And if I do, I'll insert a clip of them into the video here and let you guys see kind of what, what I saw. So needless to say, I mean, I'm like upset, but I'm not like devastated because kissing spine is curable. It is treatable. It is manageable even if you don't do the surgery, but the only way to actually treat it and eliminate it is to do the surgery. So that's, I have a feeling eventually that's what I will want to do. It's kind of my gut feeling, but I just don't think it's right to do it right now. Anyway, that's the updates on them. I don't think I have really anything else to update. No, I don't have anything else going on. Just, just chugging along. I am going to probably buy some jumps here soon. I'm super excited. I say I, my husband's going to buy them for my Christmas present. Queenie Park is getting rid of some of their older stock, which I don't need anything fancy, but I do want enough to be able to set up like a little small course and do some grids or some bounce lines and stuff like that. So I am going to go pick out some stuff there, get some poles, get some standards. And then my friend Jamie is so sweet and is letting me borrow some of her extra standards that she can't fit in the indoor at the boarding barn that she's at. So she's going to let me borrow them through 
spring or so or until they are able to use the outdoor again. So I gotta go pick those up next week, I think. And then I can start jumping again. I haven't, I literally have not jumped them in a month. It's been a while and I like really miss it. Really, really miss it. I'm really hoping I can get Renita back in shape to hopefully be competing meter 20 by the end of this year. She can easily be doing meter 10, meter 15, like right now. The schooling shows in the area don't really go that high. I think they maybe go to meter 20 for some places, but a lot of the shows in the area, at least, like the Irish Fox ones, I mean, they set super soft. They don't set, like, accurately. But I think Happenstance does meter 20, and I think there might be a couple more. Um, Avalon used to, but obviously with Stacy passing, which if you didn't see my last video in the tribute I made for her, um, Stacy, the owner of the barn at Avalon that I went to after Lake St. Louis Stable, she did pass away from cancer. So that was really, I'm trying not to get upset, um, really devastating. She was, oh my God, I, I, every time I talk about her, um, she's pretty, very it's very devastating. I'm still incredibly upset about it. And I loved going to her horse shows and I just, I miss her so much. But she did do some really awesome jumper classes and I will miss, miss going there. But I didn't mean to get all emotional. Just lock it up, lock it up. That is everything that's been going on. I don't have any horse shows planned until April for the USDF April at the art show at the NEC where I will hopefully get my last scores towards my bronze medal. So I'm super excited and I'm going to do a fourth level test with Zeke. So I'm hoping maybe I can get two scores for my silver medal. That would be super ideal, which with Debbie working with him and working with 10, because I don't, I don't know that I'll take 10 to any more like USD after Saw shows just because, I mean, he's got, he's gotten my first level scores for me and then ideally he will get my second level scores for me at this next show. But then after that, I think I'm just gonna focus on like jumping stuff with him and eventing. I'll still do probably schooling shows, like schooling dressage shows here and there but I think we will just play for fun because he was schooling some fourth level movements while we were still at the previous barn, which is in some of my videos. So I just, as far as competing three horses, I kind of just want to focus the straight dressage for Zeke. And it's exhausting going to a dressage show, having two horses to take care of, and then on top of it, doing multiple tests a day. It's, it's exhausting, so. It just is a lot. So I'm hoping that this April one will be my last one and I will finish up those second level scores and then I'll do second level one and second level three with 10 and then third level three and fourth level one with Seek is my plan. So. Anyway, I'm almost to the barn. So I will see you guys when we get there and have a fun day with somebody that is a way better rider than me riding my horse. I love when Debbie rides my horses, so <laughs> it'll be awesome. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good. Yeah, yeah. And he backs off and yeah, as soon as you pick him up, he's gotta back off mm -hmm. so that you can put together your series change. Okay. So when you're working on the base of his neck, 
are you almost like moving his haunches over and then Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mhm. Mm yeah. Mm-hmm. You have to come up off your forehand yeah. and give it the base of your neck. I don't I don't want to pull on your face. I want you to just Yeah. Let's you know, come up off your shoulders. Yeah. Good boy. Good. Okay. Most horses are strong at the front. Mm-hmm. He's strong everywhere. <laughs> he is so big. And he starts pulling. Yeah. It's like a freight train. Yeah. And when he's good, he's like as light as a feather. I know. So there's no, he, he knows how to do it correctly. Yeah. Well, because in a lot of the videos in mine, you can see where he's super light. And then you'll see me get jerked forward when he pulls down. And it's like. It's hard for people to understand like just how strong he can get like to physically be able to do that. <laughs> it's like he lures you into like a false sense of security and then he's like Yeah, I'm curious to see if those pro stride injections are um, starting to work yet. Yeah. He's getting shot on Monday, so that'll definitely help. Not too bad. <laughs> Blame and hot cheddar. <laughs> Debbie, do you drink wine? Huh? Do you drink wine? <laughs> yeah. Okay, yes, she does. I, <laughs> I drink margaritas. Yep. She's got a big day today. I know. <laughs> You'll know. It'll be nice and squishy. <laughs> That's nasty. That's why we that the looks better. She's asking him for a half pass. And that's a shoulder in. She's basically like I'm putting the shoulder out. <laughs> At least from this trip. Mm-hmm.
The best is when you, in that fourth level test, when you go from the extended canner and then try to get them back in the corner to, I think, yeah, no, it, it's not, it's not fun. And if anything, just give them the two, 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 zero. Two, 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 two zero. Instead of nine oh, to another two. He's uh, hollowing out and trying to take over, and okay. then he's getting mad because she's not letting him. Mm -hmm. So instead of just saying soft and going into it, he's trying to like run into it. Uh, yep, see how he hollows out instead of just, yep. Yeah, he's trying to go into them way too quickly. Particularly, just not like this little spot. I was gonna say, yeah. Yeah, he can deal. It's, it's really probably around the, the, just the corner itself. And you just bend it. Uh, mm -hmm. Just bending in itself, I think. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm hmm. Having fun? Did you see? Yeah, sorry I undid everything that you did when you had me pulled up. Or whatever she uses mm -hmm. as her reward. I know. Oh yeah. That's awesome. Get her some engraved spurs. I know, that is so good. I mean, on the inside, just right there. Maybe you could get away with that. <laughs> right. Hey, it works. It does. See, and the thing with Zeke, too, he knows what he's supposed to do. He knows exactly what it, what it, what we want and what he's supposed to do. He's just stubborn. He does. But in Debbie's case, she's still not, she's not forcing him to do it. Mm -mm. She's just asking him to do it. Ah, which, there we go. Which is nice. Mm -hmm. That's a nicer way of doing it. If she could force him to do it, I'm sure that then he'd become extremely unhappy. Mm-hmm. You kind of want to make it like it's his choice, like he, his idea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, okay. So does she just do animals? Or no, they, yeah. Are they scientists? Like, some of them yeah. can be. Yeah, yeah. Some, some of them can be both. There's okay. like all kinds of different. Uh, same one, though? Yeah. Okay. I think it's intriguing. I mean, she does. She does it over the phone. No way. Mm hmm. Uh, huh. There's one. Oops. There's one locally that. I've used once. Hmm. I mean, she. It would just be so disappointing if Jimmy was like, "Yeah, I'm not in with these people." So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was like, "Okay, I don't want to hear you anymore." Yeah. <laughs> yeah, cause she'll she'll tell you she's like, I say it as it goes, you know. Like if they tell me, I tell you, you know, it's not a. There's some things you might not want to hear. Exactly. Yeah. The other day when the tornado started to go off, I Maggie was the first person I texted. Are you guys okay? Are you okay with my coach? I'm over here like, 
Uh, we don't hear the sirens, but they're inside. I didn't even hear them either. Right, you don't hear them here. Oh, yeah, you were here. Oh, that was, oh, okay. That was that night. Ah. I was like, did it happen again? Because I didn't hear anything. He's like, oh my god, all this extra weight's really hard to carry around. <laughs> he doesn't have that high benefit from carrot stretches. Yeah. But that is something you have to constantly do. I know. So, like, not worth it. Not worth it. I did them with 10 for a long time. Like, if you can consistently do them, it's extremely beneficial. It was a lot easier. I don't know what I was doing. But it's, uh... Use your brain, buddy. Well, this summer, Maggie, if you need some help, you always wait on the horses. Well, not just with that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Brown here. Ronnie, you do. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's why he has so much anxiety over it. Oh, it's exactly right. I've we've done a lot to get him sound. Right, and just because it's the right front, if he like I said, if he's compensating, he compensates in his left hind, which makes his left SI really sore. Yeah, so that would not be Well, and his. I'll have to show you a picture, but his right hip is dipped. It's dipped. Look at his butt cheeks. Yeah. Can you see how his outside butt cheek is lower than his upper inside butt cheek? So he, Ten, has two vertebrae. So. Well, that's why we were having all those issues like with the chain when he was adding all the changes in the corners because I was trying to take that right half halt <laughs> and instead of like just giving, he was like, let's change. And I'm like, no, no. Yeah, I can put his neck down now. I can put him, I have no inside range. I can put his foot Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I'm not skilled enough to fix that. He does. Mm-hmm. Grinds her teeth. Oh, is that what she does? Mm -hmm. She doesn't do it all the time, but she does. Like she, she does do it. I think it's more of a, like you know how people crack their knuckles yeah, or, a habit. yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I've treated her for ulcers, we've done, had everything vet wise done that needed to be done, and she just, she's always done it. She used to stick her tongue out, but she doesn't do that anymore. Mm -mm. Nope, it was just her. They really don't. They chew a lot, but they don't stick their tongues out. 
Well, yeah, I've got the best rider on her. <laughs> if she didn't make my horses look better than I do, then I don't think I'd hire her. <laughs> well, she's got such a sensitive mouth. Like yeah. you can't, you can't bully her and you can't be in her face. Right. Like she is not happy. Mm -hmm. She's so strong, but has such a sensitive mouth that like, she's a very tricky ride. Yeah. You, gotta find that happy medium. you do that keeps her happy because she doesn't want you moving around or doing too much up there on her sure. but she doesn't want you not doing anything either her, right, yeah right. so she's like there's a very small window right. with her and then scaring Renita yeah Renita doesn't really get scared <laughs> I used to take pets to school all the time. Our teacher. It's crazy because I know this looks nothing like it feels, or looks nothing like it feels. She is so strong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, once they. Yes, you can. You know. Oh, Maggie, you'll get a kick once I get those jumps and start jumping her again. I'll just say on our cross country, we are always very, very close to being under time and getting penalties that way. And that's usually with me having to trot. Yes, there we go, there we go, there we go. Renita does not care at all. Is she the one that jumps or Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All that is is just she's losing connection okay. with her and she's stopping steering. Okay. So you just put her into a position where she has to listen to you. Steering. Right. Okay. And then she's not in a position where she can't communicate and she can't communicate. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Then she'll be a little softer. Okay. She's a control freak. Yes, she is. And she's got to give it up and let you 
Debbie, that's like me never being hungry. Right. Or never wanting food. <laughs> that's not going to happen. <laughs> Her not being in control. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the equivalent of me not wanting to eat junk food. <laughs> no, just... Yeah, just to turn... Yeah. 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 She doesn't get to take over. Right. She kind of thinks that when you go in a straight line, she, you'll freak off. Yes. And even turning, she's turning, but... She's not actually turning. Yeah, she's not really connected to the... Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So lots of circles and change of direction are her best friend. Yeah. Yeah. I can imagine how pissed off she is. <laughs> but once she realizes she doesn't have to be in control, I think she'll be so much happier. Yeah. Yeah. Telling her, but not demanding. Demanding. Yeah. He's like, I don't want to work. You would think with how long his legs are and how, like, just in general, like, large he is, he would have a much bigger stride. Wow, look at you. Oh, so fancy. So fancy. 
He's like, God, she didn't let me get away with anything. <laughs> He definitely looks like he's reaching more behind now.
Oh, so handsome. So the kissing spine, I think, was right here. Yeah, like right, right in this area right here. So. What do you think? Hmm? But he's got such a nice top line, so. You did you look so good. You look so good. Yes, you do look good. Are you handsome? Yeah, you're so handsome, aren't you? Are you the most handsome? Oh, yeah. So handsome. So handsome. So handsome. So I just got home and this bit finally, finally got delivered. Like, it is ridiculous how long it took for this bit to come in. So I'd have to go back and look at the date on when I ordered it, but it was at like sometime in October that I ordered this. It's the Papacini Harmony something or other, Harmony bit. And this is the one that I tried on Renita in that jumping lesson with Ashley a few rides back. So if you want to go watch that, if you haven't yet, um, and see her in this, this was like magic, magic for us. So it's obviously, um, just very soft, flexible rubber. Um, you know, you can bend it, which is great for how soft her mouth is, but then it's a gag. So I've got that leverage on her pole as well. So essentially what I will probably do with this is set this up as a double rein. So I'll put the snaffle rein on here and then this has the, uh, this has got the where the gag pieces go through and then I'll put a curb rein on the gag pieces. So that way I have it if I need it, but if I don't, then I just use the snaffle part, which I think is going to be a better option for her because when I wrote her in this, I mean, she was, I mean, she was still Renita, but like she was so responsive, so nice. I mean, she still had a little bit of head tossing, but I found that with the gag, it, it backed her off so much that I was like, oh my, like I was, I had to re like figure out how to ride her with it because it was just, it wasn't normally like her. So that's kind of why I'm thinking I will start out with doing the snaffle and then the, um, gag rein on two and rider just with the two reins. So that just showed up and I'm super excited. All right, what are you doing? Wow! 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 Well, I think I'm going to end this video here. I have lots of things to do. We've got uh, my friend's future mother-in-law coming over so we can finish decorating the house. So it's ready first thing tomorrow morning so that way we don't have to like run around like wild women tomorrow. So I'm going to get some stuff done before they get here and then... Yeah, so thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in my next one.